Uh, it is 5 p.m. on Tuesday, September 26th. The Board of Commissioners of the Hardwick Electric Department is having a special meeting. Uh, all of the commissioners are present, as is Mike Sullivan. And we are here to discuss loan documents related to Wolcott Hydro and the Hardwick substation. Um, having said that, I don't think we really got loan documents, which is what I thought we were going to get. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear us, Mike? Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. He's looking perturbed. Yeah. <laughs> we better get Mike reeled in. So while Mike's doing that, um, yeah, I, I think I suggested getting the loan documents, but you know, the information they provided, while it isn't the final loan document, it's at least it gives all the information choice, perhaps, or at well, least subject yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't have whatever covenants or whatever else may yeah. be required, which you but know, at least we'll... might allow us to narrow the field unless Yeah. 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 Well I, I think I think the other thing that we have to discuss is this thing that came from from Ken, because yeah. I went and and read the relevant sections, and I I think whatever we decide to do, it's going to be in the form of a recommendation to the select board, because mm -hmm. they're the ones who have to approve this. It doesn't have to. Be you didn't like that, Matt, Nat, huh? No, I, my picture is fuzzy. I'm using a different computer because I was playing bridge with, it's complicated, but anyway, I've got two computers going and bridge on the other computer, but they're muted. I don't want to end that meeting because they're dependent on my Zoom. So, so I'm on a well, different Zoom. Speaking of tech, we better check to make sure Michael's hearing us now. I can hear you now. All right, that's okay. Uh, I think what we said is that we, we did not get the full loan documents, but we do have uh, proposals, um, and we also need to discuss process, uh, because my read of Section 108 of the, of I forget what the pre prefix is, um, but we need approval. We don't need approval from the PUC, but we do need approval from the select board. Um, and we can discuss that. I was I was hoping we'd be able to get Eli here because if he has a different view of that, I would like to understand what it is, but um, but let's talk about the proposals in any case. Isn't that uh, pretty routine? I'm sorry, is what pretty routine? Yeah. I'm sorry, I thought you, Nat, did you ask a question? I heard, is yeah, it Yeah, I thought it was, it was pretty routine. I mean, we don't, I didn't, I didn't know why we would need Eli. You mean going to the select board? I thought we had been told at one point that we didn't need to go to the select board. Um, and um, I, I, from my reading of the statutes, um, they seem pretty clear to me that, that we do. Um, but oh, okay. I haven't been working on these things for the years that Eli has. Um, so I think there are I'm, three I'm proposals. trying to get Eli lined up right now to join us shortly. Okay. Um, I think we can talk about the proposals without, without Eli. So, um, and I think there are, I think all, both, we have two lenders. We have Union Bank and we have Community National Bank. And I don't think we have proposals from anyone else. Is that correct, Mike? Um, now we can't hear you, Mike. <laughs> I'm muted because I'm trying to call Eli. That is correct. Uh, okay. Um, so both banks have broken things out um, between Wolcott and other capital improvements, treating Wolcott as uh, a short-term borrowing in advance of getting reimbursed from FEMA. Um, Whereas, um, and not as a capital improvement, um, whereas the substation and the related work um, is being treated as a capital improvement. 
Union Bank has proposed lines of credit for both. Uh, Community National Bank has proposed a line of credit for Wolkett and then has proposed either a line of credit or two different options on a 10 year note for the capital improvements. Um, so that, and, and there are different interest rates on all of them. From my vantage point, one of the options from Community National could be eliminated right away, which is their op, what they call option two, which is this balloon payment. Um, I think the whole point of doing a long-term borrowing is to spread the, the cost out over the people who are gonna be benefiting and um, having a lower payment than a, the, than a balloon is just sort of the inverse of, of financing it out of current money and having everybody now pay for it rather than, this is just having everybody 10 years from now pay for it. Um, but the people in between who are benefiting aren't paying for it. So to me, that's just not co consistent with any kind of philosophy that makes sense to me, borrowing. I don't know how others feel about it. Yeah, I, I, I would read that the same way, Lynn. Um, Mike, you looked like you were saying something, but we couldn't hear you. He's on the phone. No, Mike Ambrosino, Michael Ambrosino. Oh. Now your lips are moving, okay, Michael. We we can't we can't hear you. From the look on his face, I'm guessing he can hear me saying that we can't hear him. Yeah, he's I'm, kind of laughing. He's, yeah, he can hear us. Okay. Well, in, in the meantime, um, <laughs> Miles or Nat, your thoughts? <laughs> no, I just the Union Bank looked good. I agree philosophically, Lynn, but definitely. Uh, feeling like I want to defer the precedent of the department. And Nat, when you said Union Bank looked good, which of the notes? Well, I thought it was on? under 5%. The, the line of credit. Yeah, yeah I, can't well, bring it, it. I can't bring them up now because I've only got Okay, I, I, I actually summarize this stuff, but it's not in anything that I can share. Yeah. On the Wolcott line of credit, Union Bank, assuming that the terms are otherwise the same, and from the information that we have, I think they basically are. They're one-year line of credits um, for $600,000, and Union Bank is talking about 4.75% and go. Community That's National 5.15%. So yeah, it would seem to me that Union Bank. Is... Michael, we we can hear you now. Just... You can hear me now. Yes. Yes. Okay. Go for it. While we can you. hear you. But then, Lynn, what oh, about the say. second, the second piece for Union Bank? The second piece, if we were to go with a line of credit for the capital improvement, uh, Community National is actually cheaper. They're five point yeah. six against five point eight nine for um, Union Bank. Yeah. And the uh, other problem with Union Bank is it's, it's a little bit apples to apples in it. the the term. The term well, I'm talking part. about no, they both have one year lines of credit for mm -hmm. for the capital improvement. So the term was the same, I think. Mm. The note there's a ten, community national has a ten year note or a twelve right. month line of credit. Yeah, and what I was thinking, well, and this would flip back to Mike um, Sullivan for some questions on the, the how we're going to disperse. If, if we're feeling confident we're going to get the money back on Walcott Hydro, and Mike feels like he's going to be draw, he needs to be drawing it um, right now. Then I was intrigued, and I I don't want to pretend like I've got a firm point of view with this. I'll just sort of lay this out as something for us to shoot at, poke at. I, I kind of like the idea of 
taking half of it as a line of credit, half of it as a long-term loan, and that that would fit with our rate case approach. But maybe I'm missing something. And, and my, uh, my general bias is to, to lock down the longer term and get it into our rate structure, get the rate locked in. Because the problem with the, the rate cases we have to do is if if it's um if the rates changing over time um you know what are we going to do you know how are we going to get rate relief whereas we need to make sure for our rate payers the rate's not stupid you know it's a generally competitive rate but a fixed rate for a long term for you know for 10 years or 20 years seems appealing for the part we're not going to get reimbursed for but again, I'm just laying that out as a, a line of thinking that may or may not be right. I mean, one question that I had was, well, first of all, is this the right split? In yeah. terms of, is it 600 and 600? Yep. And and I'm guessing that, that the banks don't view this as fungible. In other words, we can't use proceeds from um, the long-term loan for Wolcott, and we can't use money for Wolcott for the substation. Oh, um, interesting. And that that would that's something I missed and that would be well, sort of Well, problematic. that was that was there in their proposals. That's why they split it out, I assume. Yeah. And yeah. and given that, I mean it seems like Union Bank is, you know, which has a lower interest rate for Wolcott. Well, both of them have lower interest rates for Wolcott because they see this as is in essence somewhat secured by the prospect it's not secured, but there's the prospect of reimbursement. So it's it's less risky. Um, I mean, that's I'm trying to read into why there's that yeah. difference. But, yeah. but I guess I I was, and, and maybe I've been doing project finance for too long. Um, well, there's no doubt that I've been doing project finance for too long, <laughs> but that's a separate issue. Um, I was hoping that we would see something more in the nature of a construction loan that we could draw down as we need to use it. Yeah. And for over a certain period of time, which would then flip to a term loan. Yeah. That would be a 10 year loan. <laughs> we can certainly request other scenarios, Lynn. I just asked them for what they could offer for terms, uh, you know, on yeah. the, on this basic amount of money. Roger, to circle back on a couple of the things you nailed. Um, if FEMA reimburses us, <clears throat> the most they pay back on a dollar is 75 cents. So 75%. Uh, and that amount, they're, they're pretty um, stingy about. I think I yeah. talked to this prior, but on monies that we spend to uh, prevent damages in the future, for example, the mezzanine project I'm trying to put together, to get everything above the flood water levels, they're very generous with those dollars. Okay. So, so for example, the Christmas storm, uh, I think our total expense was like seventy three thousand dollars, and we're actually getting back a little over ninety because of the hardening wow. that we did. So there wow. are opportunities to go more than the seventy five, but it isn't simply for replacement of what was damaged. You have to do more. Got it. That's that's helpful. And what about what about Lynn's question and 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 mine about the rate at which you need to draw this money? Um, you know how much? Don't be. You know, first the question is, without trying to say month by month, more like in the next six months, how much are you going to draw? Then in the the next six months to go out for a full year, how much will you have drawn? Yeah, I how would say in the next two months. We'll probably need fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars. That'll get us to where the and this company, is both. This is your whole world. This your is kind of my world. immediate future. Yeah. Yep. So seventy-five thousand to find out for them to clean, dry, and test the unit once it gets to Connecticut. Uh, it's going to be about fifty thousand for the millwrights to tear the unit apart and truck it down there for that work. And then we'll know what the generator needs beyond there, whether it's a complete rewind or 
hey, we can clean this, fix the insulation here and there, and you're good to go. I don't, we don't know until that's done. Um, the switch gear we're going to take care of mostly. So maybe $60,000 for that. That will be, uh, we can start spending that next week because we're going to do it in house. Uh, but it won't be 60,000 next week. It'll be, you know, spread out over probably two months. Okay. Um, the control system and protection system, we got our first bid back last week. Uh, prior investigations I've done into that several years ago, were indicating 150 to $175,000. The bid we got last week was 300,000. Uh, and we're waiting for one more from Eaton Electrical. They're the premier like national provider of that stuff. So I don't know how they could come in cheaper than this other outfit, but I'm I'm hoping they do because three hundred thousand dollars sounds too high to me. Well, is it? Yeah. It also is it just okay? Is it? I would think that qualifications and warranties and all of those sorts of things would be relevant. In other words, it's not necessarily something that you go with the lowest bidder for. Yeah. So this the the two outfits, Eaton is the top of the line. They're the best. This outfit is out of Montreal. And our uh consultant <clears throat> that we use every year for our teardown highly recommends these guys, works with them all the time. And he works, our guy works for Ontario Hydro. So he is about as sharp as they come. And if do, they he says, have a US, if he, do they do they have a US company? Nope, everything would be coming out of Montreal. And that raises some some questions about warranties and um if there if there are any issues enforcement that that you know we need we we will need to consider. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not saying they're the one. I'm just saying. No, well, no, I I'm, I'm, just, and I'm not saying that they're not. I'm not saying that they're not. I'm just <clears throat> uh, it we're we're brainstorming here and, yep. and that's just occurring to me so whatever if that is the group we went with and it is the three hundred thousand dollars then that probably is going to be eight months you know six to eight months out before we'd actually face that cost and then but, on we're, the, we're at half, but we're at half a million dollars at that point yeah so so my question is and that doesn't include any work that needs to be done on the turbine. That's right. Um, does that 300 include replacing all the control equipment and, and all, all brand new? Stuff? Yep. Uh, and what about the building? The building's good. We're going to, the only thing we're going to uh, change is the big doors that are used to actually move the turbine in and out of the building. We're going to build uh, steel reinforced doors that we can bolt shut during storm. The rest of the windows uh, and doors other than one uh, employee door are all going to be filled with concrete and reinforced. So, so we're, we're going to bunkerize the building. So we're going to need more ventilation then? Yeah, we have a, there's roof ventilation on there right now. Uh, we're going to put one up there that's about eight times the capacity with a couple automatic louvers on the west side uh, soffit of the roof. And any idea on the cost of the building system and the ventilation? I would guess it'll be 25000 for the concrete. Just the ventilator itself, I think, is $4,000. So call it eight to get it all installed. Um, so 35000 maybe somewhere in there. Yeah. So, so we're, we're, at, we're, at, we're damn close to 600000 Yes. Without any work on the turbine. Yes. Put it over a million. Yeah, I, I, and that's not putting in any cost for doing this, this, the switch gear. I mean, the fact that we're doing it. No, I included, so, I included sixty in my numbers. Oh, you did. Oh, I'm sorry. I, yeah, and I wrote yep. that down. I just, I'm <laughs> sorry. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that the they're going to be able to dry it out and it's going to test good. But if it doesn't, it will have to go from there. Yeah. And 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 do we know anything yet about the condition of the dam? 
We have not been able to do an inspection yet because the river's going over the dam and we have no way to divert the water through the turbine and we have no way to divert the water through the sluice gate. I've actually met three different uh, crane operators. I was out there this morning with uh, one of the bigger ones. They're all getting the pricing to uh, dredge in front of the sluice gate so that we can pull that out and uh, do that project as well. But at least for now, get it opened up so we can divert the river and inspect the dam. And I also have Eli looking into the last work we did on our uh, dam safety report to the PUC, where it was an open item left between the ANR and the PUC of the process that we proposed to open the sluice gate. So it's kind of, if we just go and do it, it was never really approved and we could open up ourselves to some risk, the penalties there. So we're kind of strategizing on, okay, how do we proceed from here without triggering the a &R getting in and starting us in another two and a half year process of going over that whole matter. So, so Lynn, back to if it's okay to get get off the detail of the dam. Yeah, right yeah. Here. No, I was just trying there, to understand. There are other. Then we have the uh, the CAE and any other capital projects that we should have been implementing that we've been constrained by cash. You know, what do we need for CAE and what do we need to have so that you're doing the things you should be doing in the way of capital projects now. You know, is the C in other words, for the CAE, is it one of those deals where you got to do a down payment on this, that, and the other, and then you have to wait a year, a year and a half for the stuff to arrive before? Yeah. For example, if if I was to order the Hardwick transformer tomorrow, it's sixty-six weeks lead time. Oh. Okay. So they have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So don't. Oh my God. So CAE folks ought to. So. You know, they're going to want some progress <laughs> payments in there, maybe 25 to get going, you know, yeah. X amount as they start construction. It won't all be at once, but there will be expenses ahead of the actual invoice. So the reason I'm probing that, Mike, is, and, and anybody here listening, tell me if I'm wrong, but what we don't want to do is we don't want to pay interest on a huge amount of, of, of loan that's just sitting in the bank as cash and not doing what we wanna do, having a cushion would be nice, but carrying this huge amount of cash and paying interest on it isn't really us doing our job. That's the way I'm thinking, but we gotta have enough to cover. So if, yet, if, we're, if we're carrying it for a few months as it's going out the door, that feels appropriate. If we pile up, you know, a million bucks, and at the end of 12 months, there's 800,000. We've kind of gone overboard. That's, that's there, is, there, is, there is an ability to prepay. So that's something to bear in mind. In other words, if, if, we, if we went with the, with the 10, I'm assuming there's an ability to prepay. It was clear that there was an ability to prepay on the, with the lines of credit. It was not quite as clear to me. Yeah, the, um, I read carefully for that. And I didn't see it called out. I, I wasn't. Well, I didn't about, see it called out yeah. either. But yeah. but let's just, let's. But that's important to know. But let's if assume we overshoot or we argument. get tons more back, we just don't want to have half a million bucks of cash and be in paying interest. Paying interest. Absolutely. Um, I mean, but but if if there is a prepay with no penalty, then functionally, it could be this depending upon how the amortization and everything is done, if if we if we're borrowing a million, but we only use two hundred thousand, then we prepay the eight. And yes, we paid interest on it for but we for a fairly short amount of time. I, I'm just I'm just in you know six percent interest on let, let's say half a million dollars, just because I can do that in my head. Yeah, well, yeah, you maybe do it. I think both banks are thinking in terms of 1.2 million divided in half. Well, know, two, well, 600, if not, all, no one's offered us a long-term option for Wolcott, which I think is something though, that we need to talk about. They've, they've, you look, you look puzzled. Yes, 
Yeah, but only because I it might be just because we didn't pose the question that way. But well, Maybe. I can tell you we've I've I've inquired about long term loans with the local banks uh, about AMI investments and stuff like that. And they never want to do anything with us more than 10 years. They'll do something for 10, 10, 10 years. 10 years is fine. 10, 10 years, years is fine. Okay. Yep. 10 years is fine. Okay. But, but, but the proposals for Woolkit were just letters of credit. Both banks did that. And I don't know if that's because that's what you asked for or because to no, me. I just asked what they could offer. Because to me, what we're doing at Woolkit is a capital improvement. Yeah, but the tricky thing is the inject this reimbursable, the the government reimbursement for it, right? So it's definitely right. a capital improvement, but it also has this dimension of, and that gets us a lower interest rate, right? That's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. But 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 also but, I mean, a shorter but, term. But, but what's what's the? I mean, we're talking at one percent interest, but just in a round number, on six hundred thousand dollars, is six thousand dollars. Yes. That's. It's 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 real money, but it's not going to not huge. Yeah. It, it's it it shouldn't be the basis for our decision, I think. Um, and so to me, that difference in interest is not enough to not treat it as a capital improvement. And if we get reimbursed, we get reimbursed and we can prepay the loan. And I and and maybe we can have some discussion with the bank to to get some better rate. We don't we don't have any transparency from, from the banks on how they came up with these rates. They're um, happy to meet with us and, and chat. That that would be no problem. Uh, and and Mike, what you sent us yesterday did have the actual line of credit agreement that that Lynn you were looking for. Was I didn't the, study it because did, did I miss? Did I just, miss? Yeah, there's one, that? and it's just boilerplate. It's not something yeah. as you wouldn't right. expect. It's not customized to us. It's just a boilerplate line of credit agreement. Sorry, I'm I missed that. There was a whole string of emails that yeah, I was yeah. at today. So, which one which one was it, Roger? It's the one at 7 37 a.m. yesterday. Right before the indicator loan rate. Uh are you talking about the, the tax certificate for the note? I mean, there were several documents there. I did look at those. I didn't think yeah. any of those were the the second one. Yeah. There's a capital improvement note. Is that what you're talking about? Are you the, I think he's uh, talking about the capital improvement resolution? Sorry. Well, the resolution is is the resolution from from the from the town. The resolution is the resolution from okay. the town. The there, from, there, there were four documents. And Mike was forwarding along the package of five documents from Holly Pepin. Oh, it's from Holly. Okay, I'm in Tina's. Okay, I'm I I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's I'm in. Um, so there's Tina uh, is you is Union Bank and Holly. Yeah, no, no, I know that. I know that. I'm just going back to the emails. Uh -huh. um, Okay, I, I see one email that I got at 738 yesterday. So the one right before that. One right before that? I don't have one right before that. You're you're shown on it, but maybe it didn't get through to you. I have an email that Mike forwarded from Tina that says, Hi Mike, attach to the templates for our capital improvement note loan documents that would use be used on the hydro upgrade. Without any modifications. Shall I share my screen to look at the documents? Sure. I just have to get back to the too much open. Mike as soon as uh yeah. Well, we... 
Yeah. Yeah. No, no worries. Can you imagine doing that in, in, any, in, in any of these, are there differences in the upfront cost to us to secure the loan? Are there points up front? Or is there a fee that we pay up front? Yeah, that's the loan? email that I was talking about. The indicator loan. Yeah, that's from Union Bank. No. And, there is, and there is a note form in there. No, that we're talking about the one from Community National. From Community National. Okay. That wasn't a 1078. Uh, that wasn't a 378. Everybody seeing this? Yeah. Yep, so from Tina, or I'm sorry, Holly, <laughs> Community National. We've got this packet. There it is, yeah. Okay, I, I did so not. She did, a, she did a pretty good job laying out for us loan documents, everything. So we do have a lot there that we wanted if we've got what we want in the structure. Can someone forward that email to me? Yeah, I just did. I just did too. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't get it, but I did not get it. And what I thought was somewhat helpful So you were saying, Roger, you stopped. You said what, you, what was somewhat helpful. Yeah, the, that it was a complete package. So there was, us, there was so this so there was the tax <laughs> anticipation note, which is just a very simple note. I don't know why it's a tax anticipation note because we don't have taxing authority. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean this is this is this is not going to be the right document. I suspect because it's not it's not based on taxing authority and then there's the credit agreement yeah well i'm not gonna i'm not gonna read this on the fly and, and give my thoughts <laughs> well yeah we, that may not be what we need to do anyway um And Roger, you had looked at this. You said you didn't see any prepayment, any right to prepay. Well, no, the, this does have the, because it's a line of credit. Okay. So we're good to go in that respect with the line of credit. Um, Union Bank's line of credit had some had some very strange stuff about the interest rate, um, as I recall. I think I think we need a different proposal. I think we need something that functions, for lack of a better term, like a construction loan where we can draw it down over a period of time, whether that's over a year or two years or 18 months as we need it. Maybe we need two of them. Um, that's an interesting point that the, um, you know, both, both projects have that characteristic of an extended drawdown. Um, but then one of the projects needs a long term. The other... Mike, is 12 months long enough for Wilkett? I, I hope it is because we need to get back up and running, but is it really? I think 12 months is reasonable, but keep in mind that, um, again, we haven't been reimbursed by FEMA for the Christmas storm yet, and that was a pretty small event compared to this flood. So it'll so, be, you know, it could be a year easy or more yeah. before FEMA gets anything together for us on Wolcott. 
Yeah, and then we're scrambling. Right. Well, then then we're in a situation where we've got a balloon payment at the end of the at, at the end of the year that we've got to pay. Or for, or find financing to extend or or, or refinance. <laughs> Yeah, one or, one or one or the other, or possibly do a bond issue before the time is up, and maybe get a better. But even, rate. With a, even a bond issue, I mean, the problem with a bond issue is it, again, if if the work is done, and it's a refinancing and doing that with a bond, I think that you know that's fine. But to be using problem, it, yeah. and the bond's going to wind up. There's going to be a lot of fees associated with the bond issue. And, uh, and upfront costs. So if we were gonna go through all the brain damage and fees, we'd wanna make it a big amount of money. Yeah. And I would argue like multiple millions, not a few hundred thousand. Yeah. yeah. And, and then you we're know, that's just my sense of the arithmetic, you know, cause your cost of executing it is pretty much the same, whether it's a few hundred thousand or 2 million. And but so don't you don't want to screw around with it if it's just a few hundred thousand. You'd no, rather pay a higher interest rate. The transaction costs would swamp out the interest rate savings, I think. Bingo. Yeah, um, that, that's a more elegant way of saying it. <laughs> that's me. I'm that's elegant. your financing. <laughs> <laughs> I just think the um, 1.2 million in the end is going to be low in terms of what we really need. Yeah. That's, that's one will. fear. Yeah. That's why I like the uh, line of credit. And we get toward the end, we know it really costs. And maybe we go for a loan then. I and mean, then we're playing with the interest rates. But, you know, the hope is interest rates will start going down next year, not up again. There, well, there are, I don't think there are any projections for them to go up that I've seen. Um, and admittedly, that's crystal ball gazing, but it, it, there's a certain yeah. logic to it. Um, it I mean, I come back to the problem with the with the with, with the line of credit is that we're not doing long term borrowing to cover the costs, and I'm concerned, you know, of capital investment, of long term capital investment, and I am concerned that we get to the end of it, and there's this, oh, well, we've covered all of that. And uh, and let's say we're in a decent cash position and then, you know, it won't, it won't get refinanced. I mean, it's hard for me to see how that would happen, but. That was a rip. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's another round of it. I mean, I mean, the other reason if we borrow now that we may refinance is because interest rates do come down. Which is why it's important to have, you know, the right to prepay. Mm -hmm. But if we do it now, we'd be paying interest on the full amount from day one that we borrow the money. Until oh, I don't. Th I don't think six that's months before we need it. My, Michael, I don't think we should. Um, personally, I would not be in favor of a borrowing structure that has us drawing six hundred thousand dollars the day we take out the loan. Right. Except unless there is the right to prepay. So right, you have the right to prepay if they say, "Are you borrowing the money? Here's the money." Well, there are two they things. Want your first of, interest. And and I, first of all, and and we have to see. There's some kind of. I see. There's a non-arbitrage certificate. I, I have. I saw that. <laughs> I love arbitrage. <laughs> reviewed that. Um, but let's let's assume that we can put the money in some kind of an interest-bearing um, account. So that we're earning something on it, yes. not as much as we're paying, but we're earning something on it. So it's the difference in spread. And if we can do that and have the right to prepay, if we don't draw it all, then, I mean, I think we have to go through an analysis once we see all of it, but the cost may not be that much. If it can, it depends on what they're saying non arbitrage is. The only arbitrage I was familiar with was in Universal Oklahoma, where they did a bond at 3% and then invested the money at 6%, didn't use the money. Here, if they mean arbitrage, you can't invest the money at all. 
that would be terrible if we can even get 3% on a loan somewhere. I mean, on a bank account somewhere, a money market, we get something. But we got to make sure non-arbitrage yeah. means, doesn't mean something that we can't use the money initially where we can get some interest on it. Yep, much interest. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. Um, it says no amount of the proceeds... From the issuance or sale of the note, we're not doing that, nor the expenditures financed by the note. That's we that's strange language. We're not going to be selling the note. It's we're you know, the bank's gonna be holding the note. So that's I I I need to look at this, but it, it almost seems like it's that the bank can't ar can't arbitrage it. But then it says no amount. Proceeds shall be expended to finance. I, I, I'm not going to do this on the fly. I'm um, sorry. But, um, but if we can. As we we're talking. Keep the money sitting in a checking account that's earning nothing. That's crazy. But again, again, if we have a, the right to prepay, and if we're talking six percent, just in a round number, on six hundred thousand dollars, five percent on six hundred thousand dollars would be three thousand dollars. Thirty. How much? Thirty. 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 Five percent? No. Five percent of six hundred is thirty thousand. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. That's okay. I should have do decimal places in my head. Um, it's, I still count on my fingers. Um, I think that, I think we have to find out what that is, but this, but this was for the letter of credit anyway, not for is that was that the understanding in the email that it came with? Looking at her email. It's not showing me anything. I guess the other concern I had was we talked about money being dedicated to Walcott. And so 600 for Walcott, 600 for capital improvement. But six months from now, if we find out we need 900,000 for Walcott and we can't use the money from the other loan, then we have to go out for another loan for Walcott to make up the difference. Well, that's what, that again, that's that's the question that I was asking in the beginning is, is, is the notion of having a split. Yeah. Um, is the interest savings enough because Wilkett's getting a lower rate because it's in anticipation of getting the FEMA, getting money from FEMA. Yeah, I'm, I'm more worried that we run out of money for Wilkett because we didn't borrow enough because they limit it to 600000 And we can't use saying, the other money. What I'm saying is if we had a 1.2 million line of credit that we could use for whatever we thought we needed to use right. it for, um, the difference in interest of 1% on six hundred thousand. That's nothing. That's that. And you, that was, and you only that, have to pay for what you use, which is also less than six thousand. You know, if it's a line of credit, we're paying interest on the amount we take as we take it. Right, but the but the but the difference is only is in in any cases six hundred thousand because there was only six hundred thousand for Wolkett. I I I I think we need to find out from the banks what kind of a structure they can offer that allows us to make capital improvements, some of which will be for Wolkett and some will be for other things that we can draw down as we need and that will be a term loan that the repayment terms will be on the basis of a term loan. 
at, at some point in time. And, and again, the, the framework that I'm used to seeing that in on much larger transactions is, but it's, it's, a, it's a construction loan right. flips to a term loan. Yeah, that, that's the best option if we can get it. Um, yeah, I agree. So well, if we don't ask, we're certainly not going to get. Yeah. No. <laughs> Mike, uh, um, I have a question just to, to, to help shape our thinking about this. As you've worked with these two banks and they have provided their solutions to you, do you have a, do you have a feeling of which is one bank or the other leaning in more, working harder for you, showing indications of being more responsive? And I don't just mean, you know, liking the person who's doing the work, but, you know, that the institution seems through that person to be hustling more than the other, or are they both doing pretty much the same thing? The documents look pretty similar. I think that uh, they're both pretty much doing the same thing, but I was pretty disappointed that Holly waited till the last minute here to get me what yeah. she got me. Um yeah. Other than that, they've been very equal, very uh, responsive, both very pleasant to work with. Um, okay. You know, we have a very long standing relationship with Union, but community comes with five star ratings from anybody and everybody I know that works with them. Okay. One one of the things, if we are, do go with community, we're going to have to open up an account. So we're going to have to move some of our funds to community. Yeah. And I don't know, my, they, they didn't say, it said open an account. Does that mean, you know, $2,000 in the account or, or, you know, what? just what exactly are they looking for? Yeah, I'm not sure. And, and I guess the other question for you, Mike, since you've been interacting with them, what Lynn just described, which is our ideal, um, that structure, do you have any feeling that they're going to look at you cross-eyed and say, well, we can't do that. That's some, you know, or do you think that's within the range of. I, I think both provide? of them will have to take it up the ladder to be yeah. discussed. You know, they're, they're at the level where they're not, I mean, they're municipal lenders. They're not, you know, lending money for your car to your kid. They're, they're high yeah. level, but to make a something outside the box of their, their structures that are sitting there, they're going to have to discuss that up, you know, up another level. But you what, don't think I'm it's sorry. crazy. There's no reason. To no, I don't think it's crazy. Enough. No, because it would what? be so much. It would be more. It'd be so suitable for both of our situations to have something we can draw as we need it. And then that and then having that convert after some period to a to a term loan, 10 years minimum would be. Lynn, I think that's what you're saying. That would be yeah. just ideal. Yeah. And 10 years would be fine. I, I, I don't, you know, I, I think 10 years would be fine. Um, if, if and what we do and the structure of, of it would be if it was so, if it was 1.2 million um, and if and when we get a chunk of reimbursement, we would prepay whatever we'd drawn at that point and the ultimate amount converted to the term loan might in the end be only uh, 800,000, you know, based on how much we get back from the government. I, I, as a policy matter, I agree with you, Roger, that that's what yeah. we would want to do, but I don't think we want to be committed to the bank to do that. Right. Absolutely. Well, we want to have the room to go 1.2 million. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think, Mike, when you talk with them, to the extent that they're concerned about how about locking in an interest rate on the term piece, I don't think they need to. I think what what you know, if we can agree to something like you know prime plus some plus an agreed margin, um, at on the date of the of the lock in, that that should, you know, be, you know, give them comfort. That they're not, you know, that they're not taking interest rate risk on the term piece. Gotcha. Yeah, and actually on the term piece, yeah, they're if they're giving us a fixed right now quote of six point four, where's prime right now? Is it at six? 
I, I, I didn't, I did, haven't looked in. in a yeah, so, week, so that's pretty attractive. But I, I follow you. In other words, we could remove that risk for off their back. So uh, as we're talking about crafting something, our, our sample size of financial institutions is quite small. Is it worth talking with VIPSA or others about who has been responsive to this type of thing in the past and who else we might want to work with and propose this to? Yeah, I re I used VEPS's suggested list. Okay. And the other, the other two of the other three uh, provided us interest rates at seven and a half percent and seven point seven percent, if I remember correctly, and the other one yeah. didn't respond at all. So that's yeah. good. So you did what Miles is suggesting, which yeah. is started the funnel big and then narrowed yep. it. And yep. Now we're down to it's a healthy thing to have two serious players. Who yep. Great. That's uh, good. The current federal funds rate um, is 5.5. Federal okay. discount rate is 5.5. The, the Wall Street Journal Prime, which when I said prime, I was not thinking of the Wall Street, you know, we're not a commercial yeah. endeavor. That's eight yeah. and a half. Okay. Um, but but I think we're looking at something like, but so I mean, right good. now they're offered, you know, on the, on the letters of credit with the FEMA reimbursement, they're below yeah. prime. They're That's below the, Fed, the discount rate. Um, so really, we're in the right zip code for, for rates. Yep. We can define these rates as all competitive. So now it's really around the structure suiting our need for the how we need to draw. And then the flexibility, the uncertainty and flexibility of the timing for conversion, the timing and the amount that converts to a term loan, a 10-year term loan. I mean, it, you know, if if there's real pushback to the extent that we have, you know, that we can prepay, we um, we reduce some of that, but risk. But it, but it, you know, if it's a big chunk, it still could be, you know, is at thirty thousand dollars, which we'd rather not pay. <sighs> Um, so I think we need more information and now, and, and Lynn, in terms of what's our urgency, Mike, when does Mike need the money? You know, Mike, cause we don't want to, we don't want to be crafting and perfecting and burning up a week and another week and another week. If you, you got to tell us. Yeah, I think I said that in the next two months. I'm probably going to need a hundred grand total. Okay. And now, the still another that. another yeah. part of this equation that we haven't been included <laughs> is um, we will be getting some VLCT insurance coverage out of this as well. Good. Don't know how much, but uh, okay. they're they've been emailing me like every three days. Do you have any new numbers? Do you have any new numbers? So they're trying to get that pool of their. Uh, five million max totaled up to figure out who's going to get what part of the pie. Got it. So, so we got time to do what we're doing here. Yep. That's what you're saying. Yeah, great. No, we're definitely ahead of the curve. We're ahead of schedule on lining up funds. You know, if something out of the ordinary came in tomorrow, we have that 200,000 line of credit that we can pull the trigger on right now if we needed to. Um, so we're sitting pretty. If there's questions we wanna clarify, then we can certainly do that. If we wanna go after a different structure, we have time to do that, we're, we look good. If we could get something from Eli that explains when we need, in his view, when we need select board approval and when we don't. So I, um, I, did, I did catch him, Lynn, momentarily. Yeah. He was adding into a, uh, town selectman's meeting in Virgins or something. But he said his take is that we do not need select board approval. But he said at the last meeting, joint meeting that we had, 
that was left as an open item that you were all, we were all, they and we were going to discuss uh, setting a policy about that. But it, as far as the legal yeah. part of it and the statutes, his purview is that we do not need their approval. Yeah. I, again, I looked at the definition of legislative body for a municipality, and we aren't one as far as I can tell. And that's, I would, I would like to see something in writing from, from Eli. Well, you know, and maybe what we do, Lynn, even if we thought it was absolutely cut and dry, personally, I'd be urging us to still go back to the select board and keep them informed and if they want to vote let oh, them absolutely vote. absolutely you know, i just i just think life's too short than to have a contest of who's right and who's wrong and they're going to approve no matter what i think yeah i mean they have uh, to. i i have i have i completely agree so when we're ready but, but sometimes <laughs> on some of the smaller borrowings you know, that you, make, you know, if, if we're yeah. borrowing money, it would really account. be nice to know that, like, when we're messing around with our line of credit, and we're doing things in short that we don't have to go at each and every time to them because it's so, it's so just that, you know, that. but yeah. but I don't see anything I did see in, in Ken's stuff. And, you know, I agree that we don't need to get PUC approval. Um, right. But but it talked about legislative body of the municipality and i think i think it's the select board yeah that it, i'll just share that that specifically uh came up in the loan documents for the 200k line of credit and eli wrote those documents up <clears throat> and based them because the loan is based on Hardwick Electric Department revenues and not tax dollars or anything coming from the town, that was a big a big separator for him. I understand that the bank may be okay with it. Yeah. But 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 the bank may not have all the the nuances of 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 what's in the statutes. And and I want to make sure we're in that we're in compliance even on smaller stuff. Um, on this, whether it's required or not, I would want the the select board to be on board. Um, but and and again, what was clear to me from the statute, and this was in Ken's thing, is that we don't need voter approval, and that's that's a big deal because yeah. that could, could make yeah that could affect timing, yeah, whatnot. So um, so if we could get something from Eli that that lays out his his thinking and and the sections of the statutes and all of that that would Will be do. so i think i think there's really nothing for us to do on this until we hear back from from the banks and so should i set them up uh to do a little you know 30 minute presentation for you and take questions or i'll pose this question about the draw convert to a term loan uh structure and they can speak to that as well at the same time is that something you want to do or do we want to because it seems like if we don't have them here to answer oh this question that comes up we could stumble again i'm 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 fine with meeting with them okay uh, i think i think we, we can send them the recording the and have them i don't sure I, yeah i don't think we send them the recording <laughs> Others no. might just, obviously, Miles, you, you would, you're, 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 yeah, I, I don't, they, I don't they, they can watch it at 2x speed and, and put together a proposal based on our discussion. I mean, I, I think just throwing it out there as a uh, potentially expedient method. Well, I, I would ask them three questions before the presentation so that we have the answers. One is, can we do the construction type loan, which is the most obvious one? Second is to confirm the prepay, that that's not an issue. And the third, that if we take the money, we're allowed to invest it somewhere well, before we use it, then we're not going to just sit at dormant someplace not making money. Credit. Now, does anyone know how the Yellow Barn is being financed? Do they have a construction loan? I, we should, I don't know if we should approach the selectmen just to ask them how they're doing the Yellow Barn. To they see also have some grant looking. money, I think. I think they have a yeah. substantial yeah. amount of grant money. My understanding is that it, it's 
cobbled together from many sources, yeah. a number of which are grants. You know, and obviously, if they, if the bank wants to look at, at at our videos, they're welcome to do that. <laughs> they can look at all of them, but uh... yeah, it might be more expedient just to map it out the way Mike did. So. Yeah, I think I think it is in our interest to to go with this. We're rolling into a ten-year term note, um, which which was one of the proposals, but not in both. So the Community National Bank had that in there as their option three. And Lynn, I think when you described it, that's what you were implying, that it's a construction loan, but just not a, a 12 month line of credit. It's a, It functions it's that way for the first year or two. And then, it, then hopefully at our election, we can roll it into a 10 year term. No, no, I was not saying that. That's what we want. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want, but what what they've offered is, as as I understand it, is is we want oh, yeah. money up yeah. front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so what we want is we want something that's a construction loan or or line of credit type. Um, but where the terms are laid out front. for 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 a longer term note at the end of some period of time, so that it we don't Bingo. have to. We don't have to be renegotiating the whole thing. Yes. We have a structure that takes care of the whole. Got it. Great. Thing. So. So it would be really helpful to me, Lynn, if you could shoot me those three points and the words that you want, and I'll get them right to Holly and uh, Tina. Mike, Mike, Michael, just have them and and. Okay, I got those. If that's. My my okay. hand scratching. I'll do my best and run them by you before I send them. That's the, <laughs> that's fine. And and give me a shout when you're sending them. I'll get so that I know that they're there okay. and I, um get back to you quickly. So well, well I, I thought this was a worthwhile call because I think yeah. it allowed all of us to oh, wrap our sure. minds around it, sort of share some ideas, and this isn't. This isn't run of the mill stuff for us. That's great. I will look at the um, community national letter of credit documents and yeah, see see what they say. But I I don't know why it didn't come through. So um, and we'll see. But yeah, the other piece is is would would Union Bank offer? A ten-year, a longer term. So, do we want to try and uh, schedule something for next Tuesday? Why don't we see when we have stuff and then figure out a schedule? Okay. Unless, yeah, I well, won't I mean, be able to do. Thought. I won't be able to do next Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, but that's that's just my own limitation. Again, if we're not pressed, let's let's see what comes back, and so that we okay. have time to look at whatever it is, and then we can see if we want to schedule a meeting, you know, with the with with the banks, or uh, it would be two meetings. I would suggest that we don't meet with both of them at the same time, um, and uh, find a time that that works for everybody. Okay. And Mike, um, if we are meeting with the banks, we should find out if that can be done as executive session. I'm just thinking that that's probably not something that. I would say would... not. I, I would say it's very public. A meeting with the banks? Yeah. I mean, we... but I'll I'll ask. Yeah, that's that's. In... I guess when we were negotiating, H eleven. The whole board wasn't there, so we didn't it right. Well, that raises a question. yeah. I just I just don't know how the banks would feel having that kind of a discussion as a public meeting. In which case I would suggest that two of us 
meet with the banks. Okay. I'll ask uh, the question and find out and I'll let everybody know. I just think it may be more productive if it's if it's not a public meeting. Any decision that we make will of course be public, but and and, and the discussion about it, but I think with the banks. Um so if we filed the com our complaint on Nichols Pond, I have not heard from Brooke, but she yes has supposed she's supposed to have filed it. She was going to send us a copy. No, she's supposed to send one to Ed Adrian for the town, and then once he acknowledged he had it, it was going to everybody. Right. Okay. I'll check in with her as well. I haven't heard any explosions, but Miles might hear him first. He's kind of in the neighborhood. <laughs> they might echo down to Lynn's house too. I don't know. <laughs> Mike and I, Mike come and down I, the, Matt, come down the hill. <laughs> I, I would expect, yeah. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to? Is there any other business? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? Okay. Second? I second, second okay. Second okay. Okay. <laughs>